This here in my hands is a Zion Crane gimbal and it's okay. It looks decent, but not my favorite. Since then, DJI has made some of the best stabilized gimbals for mobile filmmaking. But in my opinion, I feel the gimbal for the phone is now over. Thanks to action mode. And if you, like me, saw this incredible video by my friend Tyler Stallman showing the examples with the 15 Pro and the 5X lens using action mode, I was quite floored. So I took my 15 Pro out around the town, did some example tests with action mode on and off. I think gimbals are finished. By the way, I started a new company, iLUTs.com. I am providing a free LUT. Uh, you could just pay what you want for it. I would appreciate anything you can spare as a tip. But you can download that LUT and apply it to your Apple Log footage, and it makes your footage look so much better. Apple has their own LUT that they've provided, and it's trash. It's just the contrast is too much. The saturation is wonky. It makes it look like an iPhone, which I guess is what they're going for, but that's not the point for me. The point is to make it look like a camera or to have a little bit more of a cinematic tone to it. So if you want to download my LUTs, check out iLUTs.com in the description or in the uh, first comment pinned down below. So if you're not familiar with the action mode, you now can do it with ProRes and Apple Log and 4K and all that. Now you might be aware of the Excel accelerometer that's built into your phone. It essentially is what detects when your phone is sideways or upwards or when you're doing any 3D motion, there's some games. I remember Super Monkey Ball was one of the first games on the original iPhone that like really showed off the accelerometer built into the phone. Well, basically what action mode does is it uses that accelerometer data and it applies it to your video, making sure that when it stabilizes it and it's using some sort of digital stabilization, it's basically trying to get all your footsteps and wobble out of your image, it's making sure that everything is exactly the right kind of fix to where your hand is in motion. It's really amazing because the accelerometer data is there, it knew exactly kind of where to warp and fix your image. So let me show you how to use action mode so that you don't need a gimbal anymore. Now, again, like I said, you can still shoot in ProRes log. And when you turn on action mode, it does take your resolution from 4K to 2.8K. So maybe that is one of the reasons why some people don't talk about it, but I found, especially with the ProRes recording and now with the ProRes log recording, it still looks incredible. You could totally up-res this. It's higher than 1080p. I mean, 2.8K is a higher resolution than 1080p. And as you can see, when I'm in this room here, it's actually showing me more light required. Now what's cool is even though it does say more light required, you actually don't have to uh, do it. It still works fine. So I'm going to hit record. I'm in action mode here. And as you can see, it looks normal. I'm shooting 2.8K. It's giving me that more light required signal. Do like a little track move and hit cut. Now. What does happen with action mode is that it defaults to the wide lens, which of course is not, and I'm talking about the ultra wide, not the standard wide, but the 0.5X lens. The reason it does that is because it needs a little bit more room outside of the image to stabilize the footage. It's essentially having to crop in on your video and then it applies that data that it tracks from the accelerometer data and it's cropping in and applying those warps and those stabilization modes to stabilize your footage. And that is maybe where the more light is required signal comes in, especially when you're indoors. But when you're outdoors, I never see this. When you're shooting full daylight, you never see it. But as you can see straight off of my camera here, I'm just screen recording. You can see there's a lot of noise in the shadows and stuff, but I can fix that by going to 1X. And as soon as I go to 1X, I'm now using the standard lens, but I believe when you're shooting on a gimbal, what you really want to get that parallax and to get that real sense of motion is to shoot in a more telephoto mode. Again, going back to that crazy clip from Tyler Stallman, it just looks so cinematic and you get what's called that parallax, which is when you 
focus on a subject in the center of your frame and you move around it, you can actually see everything behind it moving uh, very quickly. It's a very Michael Bay effect. So 1X is probably what you would want to shoot at to get that cleaner uh, low light performance. But where action mode really gets exciting is in that 5X mode that Tyler was showing or the 3X in my case, because I'm using a normal sized phone. And as soon as I go to the 3X, again, I'm seeing that noise but what's fantastic about it is you can really get a sense of motion. Here, I'll just do it with my coffee cup. And see, I'm not even trying that hard to stabilize it because I know it's got a lot of room to crop and it's using the accelerometer data to fix it. Now, obviously you can see with the footage uh, of my mug, it's quite noisy because we're shooting on the 3X lens on this camera, or if you're using the Max, it'd be the 5X, which has a much slower aperture, a smaller sensor size, and the 1X is going to be the best performing lens all together, always, all the time. It's a bigger sensor. It's just the best camera on the iPhone. So if you can, try your best to stick to the 1X at all times, in my opinion. But in a pinch, and especially if you're outside, using the 3X and the super wide can give you some really dynamic shots. And will this replace a real camera on a gimbal? I think for a lot of people, yes. Using this with log in that action mode setting with a wide shot, just getting those wide sweeping epic shots of the venue, of the wedding venue that you're shooting at, of the, you know, first look moments. And man, this is just so much easier than carrying around a giant gimbal all the time. In fact, it's something that you could literally keep in your pocket. So if you're using a real camera and you're using that all day, well, you could shoot on like a telephoto lens on your real camera and then just mount this on top. And as you're walking in action mode, as you're either taking pictures or getting like a telephoto shot of your subject, you could literally be getting two, two shots at once. Or maybe if this one is locked off, you'd be using this one like this and you're like getting shots like that. I don't know. I'm just really excited because now with Apple Log and with the image quality that I'm seeing coming out of Apple Log, I think it's more than capable enough of mixing in with real footage. Are gimbals dead? For me, they are. I don't know. I don't, I don't see why I would use, especially an iPhone gimbal. I don't think there's any reason to be buying an iPhone gimbal anymore.